Hello, my name is Mark Anthony DuBose Jr. And I was born July 4th, 1986. And today I want to talk about dogs in a way that some of y'all are not going to like what I have to say right now. And some of y'all are going to greatly appreciate it. And I know that that's just the way the world works, but I can't just be about speaking to everybody. There's going to be some people that are going to be excluded. And I think that that's where a lot of people are, are trying to dance around certain topics to try to please everybody. And you're just not going to be able to please everybody. But someone I want to talk about day, dogs today is, is going to be the reason on why I just recently got a comment just, just a couple, couple hours, a couple minutes ago that just really put a lot of thought in me about something I was thinking about I was going to speak about today, but I got to change it right now. It's why, why did I, Mark Anthony Bowes Jr., get away from doing all of the, say, tricks, the sits and the downs and the, and the heel commands and, and, and basically, I don't want to say it the way that it is, but it's the way that it is, forcing the dogs to do it. I do not care if you're using treats, you're forcing it. I don't care if you're using pressure, you're forcing it. If the dog doesn't just naturally do it all on their own, and people call the shaping and free shaping a, a certain term. For me, that term means letting them naturally do it on their own. And then I'm going to say good boy to that. Not sitting there giving them a treat and waiting to see and, and luring them in place and doing all this stuff. That, that, is, that is just manipulation to me. If the dog is willing to do it, I'm going to reward that dog for doing it all on its own, thinking up, it, thinking up it's on its own, and just doing what it is doing. I don't want to have to make and force and dictate to that dog. Again, using treats is still dictating. Uh, Johnny, you can get up. Okay. Dick you is dictating Johnny okay is dictating what what you're forcing the dog to do I don't care how nice you try to do it and how sweet you try to be about it and how much you try to say, good boy, good girl. I don't care about any of that. I, you're telling a dog to do something that's foreign and you're making the dog do it without giving it a choice. The dog may seem excited because it sees that said treat. And of course, the dog's going to get excited over the treat because it's something extra that didn't used to be there for the regular food. And if you're just using the regular food to convince the dogs to do such a thing, you know, that's just that, 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 to me, that's a dog abuse personally. Let the dog eat its food. Let me say to you, and I hate humanizing some things, but there's just no way that you can't to just really get the whole point across. I would say to you, the only reason that you're going to be able to eat is I'm going to give it to you in slow, low doses because you're doing what's right and you're doing what's good. No, I want to have my, I want to go to the restaurant. I want to get my food. I want to have my food there and I want to eat my food. I don't want anybody to interrupt me while I'm eating my food. I don't want no one to mess with me when I'm eating my food. That's the time that you're going on a, you, you, you hanging out with your spouse, your kids, you, you're going on a date, you're talking, but when that food hits, that talking kind of pretty much stops from the majority of everybody. We just get to eating. We want to eat. And that's to me that I just have very good understanding of dogs the same way. Give them their dang food. Let them eat their food. And I'm telling you this, they're going to appreciate you much more. because They don't have to play all these games and these gimmicks to be able to survive on this planet to get the food that they need to be able to live. So for me, you're forcing the dogs. And I just don't care. If you're using a leash pressure, me personally, I prefer if I'm going to force the dog to do something to use the leash than use the treats because I can say fade that leash away much, much easier, much, much simpler than I can with any sort of treat. You're, you're creating hostility. So something that I've just come to realize and why I have gotten away from doing all of this, forcing the dogs to do certain tricks and certain commands, and I allow it to just, just come when it comes and happen when it happens. And I'm going to tell you this, it, it's going to happen when you want it to happen. It's going to. It's, there's just no way that it's not. If you take your dog for a long enough walk, it's going to pull, pull, pull. Now, this is where if you can't keep up with doing a walk like this, you get you a bike, you get you a skateboard, you get you a scooter, you get you a something that you can keep up with. At some point, that dog's going to get tired. They can't go forever. As much as I can say that a dog can run and run forever, but they get tired at a, at a point, especially if they're sniffing and sniffing, they're going to get tired. And at that moment that they get tired, they're going to stop from being at the end of that leash to coming back, to coming back, to coming back, to coming back. And then the next day, I'm going to get that dog just as tired again. I'm going to exhaust the dog to the point. Now, if you got a puppy, this is different. Don't do this to a puppy. A one-year-old and above dog, let's go ahead and work this dog. But I still would do this to a puppy in reality, but just not in a way of going for a long walk. I would make them do little, little things around the house where I'm just not, not engaging on going such. I don't want to push that dog too far too soon. But I'm going to push it to the point that it's decided that it's done as a puppy. As an older dog, I'm going to push it a little bit further to get it extra tired. I'm going to, I'm going to keep it going. And then day after day after day of doing that, you're going to notice that that dog is going to have pretty much zero desire in it to pull because it's exhausted. It's tired. This is where I, I love doing day by day private lessons with people because day one, I get that dog a little bit tired. Day two, that dog is exhausted. And they're just, everyone's always like, my dog, it didn't even wake up. It didn't even want dinner tonight. It was so tired. I've never seen my dog so tired before. The third day, it just drain it to the point that now he's just lagging behind even. I'm, I'm kind of like, come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Day four, that dog will do whatever I want him to do. He walks right next to my side and I say, good job. That's a good heel. Good heel. I like this. This looks really good. And then the, that's where the magic starts to happen, where you're convincing the dog to do it all on their own without you having to say anything. And again, 
Am I forcing the dog to do something? Maybe going for a walk, but the dog in its mind is doing what it wants to do. It wants to go pull. It wants to be savage. It wants to jump and go out. It wants to do all that. So I'm just doing something in reality that the dog is already looking for, as opposed to forcing the dog and saying, I need, oh, you're staying here. You're staying here. You're staying here. You're going to be button heads because the dog has so much energy that it's going to, it's going to outlast you with treats for a, for a fact to just keep doing that over and over and over. And that's why you got to do this at thousand, two thousand, three thousand reps to get it to be all right. For me, I'd rather have it all right and just go for a walk every single day for four hours and exhaust my dog to the point that it's tired, then then I just have all right. With spending how much money? Me going out and getting some exercise. So one thing I say, you, you, you work with me, <laughs> you about to get on your own workout, weight loss training plan as well with, with your dog. Most of the dogs are overweight and most people are overweight. You're about to fit yourself up and watch your dog get better all in one, working with me, because it's just what's going to naturally have to happen. Both of y'all are going to have to get tired, and we got to get the dog tired to get it to understand what it is that I'm looking for. Same thing with putting the dog on the said leash. The dog goes on a leash, it's going to lay down because it gets tired. It's going to be standing there, standing there, standing there. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? It's going to lay down. When it lays down, I'm like, wow, that looks really, really nice. Really nice. And day two or three or four of that, I just look at that. I'm like, wow, that... That, that looks nice. I like this. This looks really good. I'm allowing the dog to just do what it does. And I just reward it when it does it, when it desires and it cares and it wants to do it. I've yet to meet a dog that everyone says, oh, my dog knows sit. I think that every dog knows sit without ever even training the dog sit. Because if you come into the home and you just stare at the dog like this, the dog will jump on you. And then you're like, no, I'm not looking for that. You give it no energy. And after a while, that dog will come up and it just sits there and looks so pretty in your face. I look at him like, that's a good looking sit. I didn't have to do anything. I never have to do anything to teach all of these things to the said dog without forcing them to do it. They just do it. They just have it in them that they just like they, every dog has its own special trick, for instance. Some dogs will sit pretty for you right away, will wave, will give you the paw, will roll over, play dead. They all do these things. Just, it's like inside of them. And especially if you just got a dog from, from the shelter or whatever, you don't know its back history. Some pray may have worked on that. So instead of trying to teach it and even, I'm gonna say force it, just allow it to happen. Just wait it out and see what the dog's gonna do. There's no tricks involved. There's no treats involved. There's no toy play sessions involved. There's no crazy extra praise involved. There's just a dog being a dog, doing what the dog wants to do for you. And the dogs do incredible things for us. They will sit so pretty for us without me having to give them anything, but just me giving them affection, time, care, and just staring at them. That's it, they'll do that. A dog will sit in a down safe for me for, for, for hours and hours because it just, it wants that, it wants to please me so good that I don't need to give it anything to confuse it of what it is that I'm looking for. When the dog's laying down and I give it pets say, I like this, the dog's gonna be in its own self with us as humans is gonna say, I, man, he likes that so much that I will continue to keep doing this over and over for him. And I'm like, yeah, keep doing that. That's what's making me happy. That's what's satisfying me. That's what's pleasing me. As soon as you introduce the treats in that, that's where you're going to start to run into the confusion because the dog's like, I thought, I thought you liked it, but now you're doing this. And then it's, just, it's thinking too much where I'm going to say dogs have the capability of thinking very, very nicely. But we, they, they don't think like us as humans. They don't go that far. They just they, 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 have, a, they have a blockage in them that they, they, they cap out. And we need to understand the limits of when the dog is going to cap out. We can't push them past that. And that's where the confusion really starts to come in. And that's what I just constantly keep on seeing. So for me, the main thing I'm going to say is something that a lot of people are not going to like, not going to want to hear, especially for me being a dog trainer and I work a lot of dogs and I've got a lot of dogs. And I do, I'm going to say a lot with my dogs. I just don't do a lot of what dog trainers do with dogs. And that's something that I've come to realize that I don't, I don't have time. I don't have the patience, I don't have the care, I don't have the will, I don't have the desire to teach my dog a perfect sit, to teach my dog a perfect heel, to teach my dog a perfect down, to teach my dog a perfect anything. I don't have the time, I don't, I don't care. I don't wanna spend an hour each day, every day, just doing these drills to try to get my dog to be able to sit better. And for me personally, I just have yet to see the say success on getting what it is that I have by just going places and doing stuff with my dogs and just hanging out and just, just allowing things to naturally be. I, I like dogs, but I'm not the dog lover person that is just gonna consume my entire world and essence around making sure that I'm pleasing this dog at every moment, in every second, in every scenario. There's times that I gotta do what I gotta do. I'm, there's times that as much as I'm a dog trainer, I've got a lot, like Rick's, this next three, four months is busy, busy for me. Not only working dogs, but I got farm stuff like crazy. I had to process chickens today. I got to get my breeding stuff good. I got to build hatching boxes. I've got to build a, a roosting nest. I got all kinds of stuff to do out here. I've got hundreds of animals out here I'm taking care of, and it's, it's, it's busy. So I don't have time 
to just spend on six dogs, or I don't work with that guy back there, but five dogs are just, we're gonna do all these, these commands and we're gonna sit and we're gonna get them to be really good. Because there's one thing that happens, when you stop working on it all the time, it goes away. I don't know if anyone's ever told you this or not, but if you don't work on that sit and being solid every day, and Matt, you stop doing it for two weeks, your dog's gonna be sloppy. So this is something that you have to continue to keep doing for it to be really, really, really nice. And that's for me, I'm fine with just it being all right. If he sits every eight, eight out of 10 times and he does a stay 50% of the time without me having to say sit again or say anything next, I don't know why, but that just satisfies the heck out of me with knowing that, that I'm gonna continuously always have that with doing just basically nothing with my dog, but going places and doing stuff with them. I'm not the dog lover that is just, this is where we're having conflict with the, the practices and the different techniques and stuff. The people that are dog lovers, Johnny, you can get up, man, you good. You can go wherever you want. You good, okay. <laughs> he's sitting here just staring at me like he's stuck. <laughs> you can come here. <laughs> but uh, I'm not the dog lover that's just all, all consuming and just doing tricks eight hours a day. I know many training companies that they require you to do this four to five hours a day, every day of working with the dogs or we're not gonna be able to work together. There's some people that just love dogs like that, that your entire life, your entire world is dog. And I'm like, I like my dogs, but my entire life is revolved around making sure that I'm good and the people around me are good and every other animal around me is good. I'm not just gonna focus and dedicate all of my time into a dog. That's almost like wasting life to me personally. And I don't know how to say that in, in a nicer way, but to me, that's wasting valuable life that I could be doing something of substantial value to help someone else out on this planet, as opposed to just putting all of my time and injury into a dog. There's so much more that I have to do. And there's so much more that so many of us have to do that we're not gonna sit here. And that's why for me, I tailor more towards all of my training stuff to get away from that because we don't have the time, we don't have the care, we don't have the desire, we just don't care. I do not care if my dog can sit on place for eight hours. Who cares? If I have to do that, I'll put him in a crate. How easy is that? All I gotta do is shut the door and just walk away instead of like forcing and dictating on this is what I want. I'm, if you get off that bed, I'm gonna this, I'm gonna that, it's just maddening. And the more and more that you just keep doing that, the more and more you're running into a scenario that you're starting to have conflict with your dog inside of your home. You're not, you're not running into the place that your dog is really, really appreciating you because it's always on edge. What if I mess up? What if I this? What if that? How come this? How come that? As opposed to just being chill. So for me, I got away from all of this stuff because it does, it's not realistic. It's, it's, it's cute show TV looking stuff, but it's not realistic to keep up with. It's not realistic that when you train your dog as a puppy to do a sit, that it's going to be just a, a sit bomb proof dog when it gets older. You have to do that every single day day. You have to work on your down every single day. That's why my downs on my dogs look pretty good, especially my Johnny. He's the one that comes to work with me, does a lot with me. I could say down and he does because I do it with him every day at least a dozen times. That dude's in a down stay of some sort between a minute all the way up to two or three hours sometimes. He's just in a down. So I work on it every single day. If you just work on it here and there, it's going to be super sloppy and it's going to start to disappoint you. And that's where you're going to start to introduce more treats and not even more pressure. And that's where the pressure comes involved. That's where the, 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 the spatial pressure, no, I said sit, I said down. No, and your voice starts to get raspy and angry and irritating. And then a dog starts to sense that hostility because you're not working on it every day. So for me, I don't, I, don't, I don't care to do that. It's too much, it's too much. And especially if you have more than one dog, this is too much. The basic thing that I wanna do is be able to put leash on dog, have dog, be able to relax, be able to calm down, be able to hang out, be able to go everywhere I go. I don't need it to be able to stay in a perfect heel for eight hours. I don't need it to be able to sit in a sit stay for eight hours. I don't need it to be able to sit, let, be out in a down for, in, in the middle of all the traffic for 45 minutes and, and allowing people to come up to him and be able to poke him and he stays there. I don't need to do that. I don't care to do that. I don't want, I don't desire that. I just want to go places with my dog. And I realized the more that you work on all these said tricks, the less you actually get to be able to have the experience and the fun and the freedom of being able to take your dog anywhere you want it to go. You're, you're running into to, to conflict because the dog's expectations and your expectations are not matching up. Your expectations are, we've been working on this and, and, and we built the say, said foundation, like such as going to a board and train, you, foundation is there. And if you don't work on what that trainer was doing every single day with that dog and all those commands and all those cues and all this stuff and over and over and over and over and over and over, in a matter of not even weeks, you're gonna see the dog start to slip. You're gonna notice that your perfect competition heel, focus heel is starting to not be so focused, not so great. Now the dog's looking around. Now the dog's crooked on its, on its sit. Now the dog's sitting over there. It, you're just gonna watch that. If you do not work, you discipline yourself like excessively to keep that dog to stay there and to keep working on that every single day. 
That's where I think a lot of people are stumbling and fumbling today with their dogs because you're not keeping up with that stuff. And that stuff is, there's some people out here that that's all you do is work your dog. All you do your entire day, you wake up in the morning and your dog is your entire world. We cannot be listening to people like that when people have lives and have work and have stuff to do and have things to, to make happen. And our dog is not our whole world, but a dog is a part of our world. And that's the thing that I think a lot of us are struggling with. We're trying to listen to people that the dog is their whole world. And there's a whole mass majority of people, I'm going to say 90 plus percent of people, the dog is, is extra. It's, it's, it's cool around. It's, it's, it's exciting. But it's not the, the, the main show. A lot of you got kids, man, your kid is the main show, and then your dog is the, the added bonus in, in, coming along. And someone, I don't know, someone's not going to like he, me hearing that. Like, oh, you should only care about dogs and dogs and dogs and dogs and dogs and dogs. But that's just not, re, that's not real, people. And we're trying to allow someone, to, uh, allow someone to tell us what we need to do with our dogs because of how they are obsessed, obsessed about the dog. They are just, they, they are in love with the dog. I love my dogs. I am not in love with my dogs. I appreciate my dogs, but I'm not in that crazy amount of appreciation about them. I, I, I care about them, but I'm not like giving up my whole world, my whole life to make sure that that dog is good. That's where I believe that me personally, we're having a disconnect with the understanding of how to work with and what dogs are and what we're expecting from our dogs. When I say to do nothing and go places and do nothing and go places and, and don't respond and go places and stay neutral and go places and don't show the dog any affection, any attention, any anything, any any and any time, some will say, that sounds ruthless, man. And I'm like, in reality, I guess you could say that it does. But I have a good understanding that dogs are dogs, man. They're, they're, they're capable of, of understanding and following our lead. They're not, we're not out to make sure that they're just in sunshine and roses and everything is so perfect all the time. They're, they're coming with me. They're hanging out with me. They're, they're my best friend. I'm not their best friend. That's, that's where we're having complications. And I don't think people are like putting two and two together here with all this. I'm not going to give up my whole life to work on these dogs. I'm not doing that. Like this dog, especially in specific, came to be able to make my life easier. I didn't get him so that I could make his life easier. He's to make my life better. And again, some, some people ain't going to like this, but it's just, it's, it's the reality. It's the reality, folks. It just is what it is. The majority of people are not looking at the dogs as, in reality, I want to make their life better, but how can they make my life better? And once they make my life better, then they're able, I'm able to make their life better because I'm able to give them what it is that they're looking for. I'm able to give them what they desire. And, and, and there's the opposite approach. That there's a whole lot of people, not a whole lot. There's a small people, but the small people got a big, uh, uh, y'all, y'all all done. The, the small people got a big, huge voice because they seem and appear like they just love dogs, but they're loving them in the, I'm going to say, inappropriate way very inappropriate way. You should be loving yourself more than you love how people are putting all this pressure and all this extra and all this force on these dogs. And we have a huge disconnect going on. And for me personally, you know, I got to go talk about Jesus for a half a second. I understand exactly what's going on with that because you don't know yourself. You don't feel comfortable with yourself. You feel lonely yourself. You're insecure yourself. So you have to put all this into something that can't give you any pushback, that can't give you any, it can't run away from you. It can't leave you. It can't yell at you. It can't dog talk down to you. It can't do any of that. So you put all of your everything into this dog thinking that it's going to be able to complete you. And then you realize in the end, it actually doesn't. And in reality, it starts to frustrate you and piss you off. And then when you start to get that frustration and you start to get pissed off, then you want to force everyone else to be in that exact same state. And then when you get everyone else in that state, then you don't feel so bad. Because a person that's happy, they, it's hard for them to be around a person that's sad. But a person that's sad wants to get all the happy people sad just with them. Wants to get everybody to struggle and have to be, be challenged just the same as them. It doesn't really work the other way than that. And I don't know why. I'm, I'm happy with what I have with my dogs. I am extremely satisfied with what I see with my dogs. Outside of this dude, I, I, need, I, I need a real protection dog, a real, real, real one. These great Pyrenees are not what they used to be a thousand years ago. They're they soft, man. I want a dog that if a human comes on his property, he's thinking twice about considering it as an option. A dog comes on his property, it's, it's, it's not coming on his property. And this dog just doesn't do that. So I'm just not happy with him because he's just not the breed that I'm looking for. He's just too dang soft. He's too sweet. He's he, he like three and a half years old at this point. He act like a puppy. He just run around playing. But as far as my dogs and what I do, I'm totally satisfied with them. I mean, I haven't lost a chicken still with them being in the chicken coop. So I'm satisfied. I'm pretty satisfied. But I, I'm not in the desire that I need them to be able to be satisfied, that I need them to be able to make my life good, that I need them to be complete. That's where we're struggling. We're listening to people that need the dogs and they only see a certain lens because they're, they're just blocked and shut in and just, man, I can't say it in any other word than just straight up damaged, man. 
because you're, you're, you're depending on something to be able to give you something that will never, ever be able to do it. They'll, this dog will never, ever be able to complete somebody's life. This dog will never, ever be able to get you out of the depression. This dog will never, ever be able to get you and stay and keep you in a happy, excited state. This dog will never, ever be able to, to make you feel as if you're not alone and lonely anymore. This dog will never do any of that stuff for you. Only you yourself can. And we got people that are trying to force everything with these dogs to try to make them be something that they're not. They're dogs. They're basic. They're simple. They are not the, the world's greatest creature that's ever been created. That's us, human beings. That's what we are all about. And if you're struggling, you find you a human being to help you with the problems. You don't go to the dog to try to do something. So for me, I, I don't do the, the sits and the downs and all this, this crazy stuff because I just haven't found the, the success in being able to continuously keep on building my relationship to get it better. All I would see is short-term happiness and then long-term just disaster. That's all that I would see. It would look really good and really pretty. It makes me feel good when I say heal and the dog just snaps and gets in place. It makes me feel good. That's how my shepherd, he, he, he'd do that if I put pressure on him and I don't care to do that anymore. But he, he, he's sloppy, but he good. He, he like 9.9 .9 out of 10 does exactly what I'm looking for. And I'm happy with that. I don't need 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 is my ego saying, you better be perfect and I, you, you better do it and I'm telling you to do it. I don't want that. I don't desire that because it, it, it makes you feel good in the, in the moment. You get to pick your dog up from a boarding train, your dog is snappy, it's on it. It's like, it's, it, that's a good word, perfect looking. You say place and it just runs over there. You say crate and it just runs in it. You say heel and the dog just comes to you. You say heel and you start walking, you say let's go and that dog is just with you. It looks so good and it, and it makes you feel good. It makes you feel real good. But that's the short term feel good. Long term, this stuff is complicated, complex. That's why we have said dog trainers to do some things, but and then the, they got to teach the, the dog owner how to be able to keep up with that. But the dog trainer is doing stuff behind closed doors that the dog owner is, I'm going to straight up say, incapable of keeping up with. That's why dog trainers are trainers, to be able to do this. And, and you can't just build that foundation and it's just going to be perfect and good to go forever. You have to keep working on every little thing every day and that's just not realistic. And I've just noticed that the more I keep on working on all these things every single day, my relationship with my dog starts to get more and more tense. It wasn't getting better. It looked good at first. Things always look good at first. But then through time, I started to see the flaws. I started to see the holes. I started to see the issues. I started to see the drama, the chaos. I started to see the pushback. I started to see the hostility. I started to see all this negativeness as opposed to thinking that it's going to be good. Like things are supposed to be good right now. I stopped seeing the good because my ego got away. It started realizing I don't really want my dog to look like this and keep on acting like this and keep on performing like this. And then when you stop doing it and it stops being so good, then your ego comes back and says, oh, yeah, buddy, buddy, you better do it. I said, do it. I said, sit, me, sit. I said, down, you better down. And that's where extreme hostility comes in. And that's where for me, I don't, I don't care to, to do any of that because it doesn't give me the long-term success I'm looking for. It gives me short-term. And I just do not care about the short-term stuff today that everyone thing, everything wants to push around everywhere today. It's all about short-term, short-term. I wanna feel good right now. I want the pleasures right now. I don't want the pleasure now. I want the pain right now so that I can have the pleasures for the remainder of my life. I'd rather deal with the chaos now so that I can get out of the chaos and be into something great later. I don't wanna start in the pleasure and then end up in chaos. That, that, that's, I ain't gonna go that deep right now, but, the, but that's the something that is just, just the, the, what I constantly keep seeing today. We're being force fed, being sold. Oh, you get a new car, you'll look like this. You get you a new car, now you, your old car was fine and you had it paid off. And now you got all these ads coming to you, you need a new one, then you get the new one and it feels good for a moment, but three payments in of $1,200 a month plus a new insurance payment that's now $400 a month, you're just like, yeah, I don't know if this was all that great. But you felt good in the beginning. It felt nice. It felt good at the stoplight. You got the brand new Range Rover, it looks good. But then you're just like, man, three, four months later, I've got a twelve to thirteen hundred dollar payment for the next five years on this to still go. I don't, I don't like that life, and that life is being pushed on a lot of us out here. And that's the same concept that I can say about doing some work and purchasing some help with your dog. It's going to look really good. It's going to be so pleasurable in the beginning, but in the end result, you're like, I don't know. I can't be able to keep up with this and do this. And then I'm noticing things aren't really all that great for me. And that's why for me, I want to start with being able to just get the dogs to calm and come with me and go places with me because I care a lot about my dogs. I care about making sure that I can give them what they need. I take my dogs for excessive walks every single day. It, it, uh, these two get an extreme run. All my dogs get tired through exercise and mental every single day to the point that they are exhausted. They just go lay down and they just fall asleep. 
And that's all I care to do with my dogs. And, and, and getting them to do these sits and do all this stuff just doesn't really get them there. And it starts to bring hostility. I'd rather just go places and do stuff with my dog. Something that I know a lot of people are so into. Because I see the dogs out there, but you stop doing it because your dog's going crazy. Is going for walks and going for hikes and going on the trails and going places and doing stuff like that. A lot of people love doing that. They just want to be able to go for a three or four, five, six, 18 mile hike. And, and you want to take your dog with you. And your dog, I'm going to tell you, is, is, is able to, is, unless the dog isn't like this dog, Johnny, man, he, he go for three miles. Anything more than three miles, he considers it as dog abuse. <laughs> He's like, dude, you, you, you abusing me at this point. It's too far, too much. Where I've got other dogs that'll go 13, 14, 16 miles like it ain't no thing. But it's a, if, if you want to do that, that's, that's what you want to get out and start doing. Stop focusing on all this other stuff, but focus on what you want to do. You want to take this dog on an eight-mile walk four or five days a week. Get out there and go for a walk. Get out there and make it happen. Stop thinking, I need this, I need this, I need this technique, I need this. Just go out and do it. And you're going to notice that day after day, in not even a month, two months' time, that you're going to be walking, and you're just going to be hanging out and doing what you're doing. But the reason you just stop is because your dog is doing something weird. You get on the YouTube, you call a trainer, and they say, oh, you got to this, this, and this, and then you'll be able to go out there and make that happen. And I'm going to say that is, that is foolishness. That is, that, is, that is money involved that don't need to be there. The most that you need to do with your dog is just take them out and just do stuff with them that you want to do. And that's why, for me, I've, I've gotten away from it because I got into enjoying and having fun with the dogs as opposed to putting pressure and forcing the dogs into doing something that they just, I've yet to meet a dog that loves obedience work. They look good. Like the one thing that I can say is if the dogs loved it, then why do you need treats to convince them to do it? Why do you need toys and play sessions and crazy praise and all this to get them to do it? If they loved it, they would just do it. They, that's why I stopped doing a lot of my obedient stuff because I noticed the dogs did not like it. I knew that right away with my Johnny in the dog training school. They were like, oh, you need a better treat. You need a better. If he doesn't want to do it for this, he doesn't want to do it. He doesn't enjoy it. He doesn't like it. If I have to give him a, a huge bonus, a huge reward to just convince him to keep doing it, he clearly doesn't like it. He doesn't want to do it. And I have yet to meet a dog that is just like, I'll sit with least pressure all day and he just jazzed up the whole time. I just don't see this. I don't see it. I see dogs that require you to have to force them with treats to do something that is foreign to the dog, that it's just, it's confusing the heck out of the dog, as opposed to just hanging out with the dog and being one with the dog and just chilling and relaxing with the dog. So for me, I've just noticed that my relationship was getting worse and worse and worse and worse with all of my dogs across the board. When I started focusing on you are the prize, I got to do everything to make sure that you are happy as opposed to switching that role to making it realize that if I'm satisfied, then my dog is going to be satisfied with me being satisfied. And that's a, a huge transformation that I've just seen that I think a lot of people need to really, really, really realize. That when your dog is doing what it is that you're looking for, you're going to start to realize that that dog is really, really nice. It is a really good dog. But as soon as that dog starts to, you start to have to do stuff with that dog that you don't care for. You don't care to do 80, 80 minutes a day of sit stays, down stays, play stays. It just, it, it aggravates you. That frustration that you have is going to translate to your dog. If you love this stuff, cool, keep doing it. But have a good understanding that not many people like that. Not many people are just all in, just I want to keep on doing all this stuff with these treats and all this stuff with my dog for the next 15 years. Not many people. Most people that I meet, most all, most every single person that I've ever met, they all they want to do is just be able to have the dog and hang out with their dog. And they want to figure out how to be able to do that. And how to be able to do that is the most simplest thing on the planet. Put leash on dog and hang out with dog. Put leash on dog in-house, have dog hang out with you in-house. Put leash on dog, go outside. Put leash on dog, go in your car. Put leash on dog, go for a walk. Put leash on dog and just have it sitting in the bathroom with the leash on while you're, staying, while you're taking a shower. Put leash on dog and just have it do everything with you everywhere you go and everything that you make happen. Put leash on dog and hang out with dog. That's going to give you the dog, I'm telling you, that you're actually looking for. The dog that you think that you want watching these TV shows and stuff is not the reality for any, most, most all people to keep up with. So I, it fascinates me with everyone talking about the working on all the, the, the sit and the down, the place, the, heat, the, the recall, the, the, all these commands, the leave it and all this stuff. And I'm just, I'm just, I get it. I get it. But I still have yet to see the, the say, said success that that is helping with the said issues that people are having in their homes. The issues people are having. My dog is, is taking food off the counter. A leave a command isn't going to fix that. If it did, then that would be a simple thing that everyone would be able to do, right? Put an e-collar on the dog and having a dog go up and just giving a dog a stem when it goes on the counter, it doesn't fix it. It deters it, 
But once, once you turn your back, that dog is going to do it. And that's where we're struggling, right? When you turn your back, what is your dog doing? When you're not looking, what is your dog doing? When you're not around, what is your dog doing? When you say free, okay, release, go, free dog, whatever, what is that dog at that moment? I want to focus 99% of my training time on when the dog is in the said free, not when the dog is in the command that I'm, or cue that I'm looking for. I want to know, I want to train my dog in free. And that's where I do the 100% complete difference of what I see most people doing. Because I care more about when the dog is in its free state as opposed to when it's in its active working state. The working state is forcing the dog to do something that it in reality doesn't desire to do. Because if it wanted to do it, again, you wouldn't need treats. You wouldn't need all the, you wouldn't have to stage all the stuff to do it. As opposed to getting your dog, dog, dog out and doing stuff with them and seeing what they want to do. And, and arranging around making sure that you are both balancing to be able to do what it is that you want to do and what it is that they want to do. As opposed to you just forcing, to dictating to that dog, you better stay in this heel. Oh, you did? I'll give you a treat. You better stay in this heel. Oh, you did? Okay, I'll give you a treat. You better stay. If you move, I'm not feeding you today. That's the language that's going on. That's what's happening. And I don't think that people are like thinking this all the way through. You're, you're only thinking half of, the, half of what's going on. Oh, the dog seems excited that he gets a treat. But he's also so frustrated to the point that he's like, if I don't do right, if I do mess up and I don't get that treat, then what? Then what? When nothing comes to me, then what? The dogs are in, 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 lim in just free-for-all mode. Very, very anxious. And that's why. <laughs> How many more anxious dogs are out here today? How many more fearful dogs are out here today? How many more reactive dogs are out here today? As opposed to any other, any other time that any... I've spoken to other different trainers. This stuff is like getting worse and worse and worse this, this, this couple of years. Someone will say, oh, it's, it's COVID this and COVID that. We can all put excuses out there and say, that's the reason why all the dogs are bad. Or we can all just stand up and take responsibility and say, maybe we're trying to do stuff with our dogs that we shouldn't have been doing in the first place. And, and we're trying to force something on our dogs that we shouldn't have been forced in, in the first place. And that's why we have dogs that are extremely fearful. That's why I have dogs that are extremely anxious. It's, it's still confusing to me. It's confusing to me to just see, see how this is because it's, it's us that's, that's doing something that, that's creating that. And yes, there, there's those dogs that are just genetically I don't like using this word, but it is what it is. Messed up. I've got two of them. One, one dog that's just, she's shut down, man. She just won't come. She's good. She's better. She's all right. She, I could take her anywhere. I don't even need to leash the dog. She's good in every scenario. But she's shut down. She is a nervous. She is scared. She is fearful. And, and, and we build them up to be able to get better. And then I got a dog back here, Great Pyrenees. I mean, he's perfect for taking them anywhere and doing stuff. But as far as his doing his work, that if a cat... <laughs> <laughs> this is why I got to get rid of this dog. If a cat were to go inside of that coop right now, that cat will whoop his butt and steal three chickens and then run off. He's not tough enough to do what he's supposed to do. He, he's insecure. So, yes, some dogs are genetically not as secure. But as far as being the mass majority, that's confusing to me. The mass majority of dogs should be confident. Dogs are beasts. They are savage. They are, they are ruthless. And we're having some super, super soft dogs, and we're creating that, in my opinion, on not allowing them to face their fears by giving them treats, by trying to get them to, to look away, by not, not getting them in, in the thick of it what, are, what they're stressed about. They were running away from every scenario. We're not even allowing dogs out anymore. We're like, oh, the dog is reactive. You can't take the dog out in public no more. And it's like the only way you're going to get it better is by taking it out there and doing that. You can't run away from it. You can't do a whole bunch of stuff inside of the house and thinking that that's going to be able to get your dog better outside. No, you got to go outside. You got to do it. And we're, we're making our dogs run away and run away and run away and keep them hidden and keep them on the side and, and never let them out, never let them experience. You, your dog barks at another dog on a leash and you think that your dog is trying to eat them all. And you'd be very, very shocked and surprised that you let your dog meet another dog, it's going to think twice. I mean, I let all these scared dogs meet this dog here. He's not the toughest, but he got a sense of him that he's like, I'm a dog, I'm good. And every single one of these dogs that someone says, oh, he's going to bite a dog, they look him dead in the face, and he's just like, he looks right at him, he, that other dog just backs down like, and then they lay down, because that's what he tells every dog, lay down. He's like, lay down, dude. And then he lays down, and then it's super calm and super chill, and everyone's just hanging out. Your dog, for, I'm pretty much going to say, is not some savage dog that's going to just go run out and just start killing everybody. You think that because you don't know, and when you don't know is where you start to start to get scared. But you need to start to just get the dogs out and start to do stuff. Get the dogs around and get them to make, make stuff happen. Get the dogs out and around and make them experience the world and push them through those fears. The more that you're running away from those fears, that's where you're creating an anxiety-ridden dog. 
That's where you're creating a fearful dog that has to bark and lunge and go crazy at everything. And that's just, that's, that's maddening. The dog, if it's scared, run the heck away and get the heck back. Get out of here. But these dogs are so scared that they think that they need to go and get that out of here faster to be able to get themselves to be able to make sure that they can stay safe. That's where all of my fearful dogs, if they have a genetic, they know what to do if something were to actually come and attack them. Just get the heck out of here, man. They're not going to go out and try to battle it. And that's what's going on with a lot of dogs. That's why they're at the end of the leash lunging and pulling. Because I got to get it out. I got to get it out. It's, oh, my goodness, it's so scared. And, and that's just that's, that's so unfortunate for me to see dog after dog after dog because they're so stressed out. And it stresses me out. Not too much anymore because I can't do it all. But to see that dog just extremely stressed out. It's hard for me to see dogs that are super stressed out. Human beings, you know, you, you stress, whatever. That's us. You a man on this planet, you stressed? <laughs> Buddy, it's just, that's your life. You're going to have that to the day you die. That is what it is. But to have the animals living in that sense, that is just, that is just disastrous for me to see. The one thing that we as humans should be doing is figuring out how to be able to get the dogs, animals, all of these species out here to calm down, to just relax. I got these chicks all ready to be able to start to calm down. Today, they look much better in there hanging out. They're much more just safe. They feel better. It's, it's our role, our job, our being, our essence to get these dogs to calm them down and relax them and let them feel safe. You want to house and contain and, and hold and control dogs or control any animals, it's your, role, it's your job to get them to be calm, it, to get them to be safe, to get them to relax, to get them to trust, to get them to be good, good to go as a good quality member of society out here. And if you can't do that, then you got to get rid of them. You got to go and do something different. You got to work on yourself first to be able to get something else going on out here. And that's something that I don't think a lot of us are, are ready to deal with. So for me, I like hanging out with my dogs. I like relaxing with my dogs. I like chilling with my dogs. I like just me making some food and just, just giving us some food. Me processing chickens today and here you all go. I'll give you all some snacks. You can have snack after snack after snack. Everything is good to go. I like just, just being with them. I don't like to force them to do all this extra madness. I just want to hang out. And that's what I know most people want. It's just to hang out. And, and that's something that I've just come to realize is using the simple methods is allowing you to be able to hang out with your dog. Using all this complicated things to, to try to get your dog to stop jumping or to stop this and to stop this, it's, it's, it's not working because you have to keep doing it over and over and over and you just can't get away from it. That's maddening. And when you got to keep doing that, that you got hostility, man. One time that you say no to that dog from not giving it a treat, from making it sit, you got hostility going on there. You got, you got it. It's, it's happening. And your dog is like trying its best to try to do it again and try to do better. That's a horrible relationship to have for the dog to try to do better just to be able to get any sort of attention from you. That's a horrible relationship. I would never, ever want my dogs to look at me and like, I'm not going to be able to eat if I don't perform good enough for you. No, buddy, I don't care if, 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 if you kill a chicken today, you get to eat it. I messed up. That's not your fault. You, 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 uh, my dog should never have to worry that if it did something wrong today, that it's not going to be able to eat its entire complete whole meal. It's not going to be able to have a nice place to stay. It's not going to be able to have water to be able to drink. It's not going to be able to get the exercise that it needs. My dogs can mess up all day over and over and over, and they know that they're going to get that. And that's something that I know for a fact builds my relationship with my dog as opposed to ruining it. And that's what I just constantly keep seeing with most people's dogs is you think that the dog loves you. But as soon as you take the treats away, as soon as you do these little things, you're going to watch as your dog doesn't pay you any attention. And I just challenge anybody with that. If you're constantly giving your dogs treats right now, stop and see if your dog even looks at you anymore. And take the treats and throw them out and get them out of the house. And wash your hands and let the dog know there's none in the house anymore. They can smell it in the house. Get rid of all of them. Get rid of all the packages. And, and watch and see what your dog does. Does your dog give you more affection or does it start to run away and don't care anything that you say? It's my number one thing. My dog knows how to sit, but only when I have a treat. So yeah, when you take that treat away, then what? Then where are we? I just want more people to really think about that. Thank you.